The notorious Indrangheta crime syndicate, based in Italy's southern Calabria region, is not nearly as famous as the Cosa Nostra, the Sicilian mafia. But the Indrangheta organization is wealthier and more powerful, with interests going around the globe from Calabria to Colombia and as far away as Australia. The Indrangheta mafia is estimated to control about 80% of Europe's cocaine trade and is said to have invested in construction projects in Belgium, Italy, the United States, as well as Germany. An expert on the group, Antonio Nicasso, said, The Andrangheta is the perfect example of a globalized criminal network. He also said, They've successfully exploited the Calabrian immigrants that headed to Germany, the US, France, Australia, Belgium, and Colombia after World War II. They all used family ties to create new links and expand their influence worldwide. The Andrangheta Mafia's operations began in the 1960s and 70s, focusing on kidnappings for ransom. The Indrangheta has surpassed Sicily's famous Cosa Nostra to become the most powerful organized crime group in Italy, and it's one of the biggest in the world. The police across Germany, Italy, and Bulgaria have carried out synchronized raids on 46 buildings for a potential connection to one of the world's largest mafia groups, the Indrangheta Group. These raids were a part of an investigation under the leadership of the European Public Prosecutor's Office, stated German police in a statement on Wednesday. Even though Italy's Indrangheta crime syndicate has been around since the late 18th century, the group recently made global headlines and took center stage at the world's most extensive mafia trial in many decades. On January 13th, up to 355 of their suspected members and corrupt officials were charged with various crimes, including murder, narcotics, mafia association, loan sharking, attempted murder, extortion, disclosure of official secrets, and abuse of office. Italian police had rounded up the suspects in December 2019 in a sting operation that was led by Italian public prosecutor Nicola Grateri. Now today, the Indrangheta is estimated to earn as much as $60 billion every year, which is more than Deutsche Bank as well as McDonald's when put together, according to a study by the Research Institute in the year 2014. Now, to put it in perspective, their annual revenue is more than the GDP of entire countries such as Lebanon, Jordan, and Uruguay. More than half of their profit comes from Europe's narcotics trade, which is thought that they control more than 80%, reports the Organized Crime and Corruption Reporting Project. Along with narcotics, the crime network is known for several criminal schemes that involve money laundering and tax evasion worth millions of dollars, extortion, fraud, high-level corruption, and trafficking in humans and armory across the globe. It's worth noting that the word Andrangata has Greek origins and it's thought to mean society of men of honor. This irony is not lost on anti-mafia scholars like the German journalist Petra Reski. Petra Reski, who is world famous for her anti-mafia publications, told TRT World that the organization's widespread money laundering crimes affect us all, yet often go unchecked. Now this new maxi trial is currently taking place in Italy's southern Calabria, where the worldwide crime group originates. It includes more than 900 witnesses and it is expected to last more than two years. The group comes from Calabria, the toe of Italy's boot, and is deeply intertwined with its region's traditions. The United States official once said, if it were not a part of Italy, it would be a failed state, in a private cable from 2008, released in 2011. The diplomat commented on the region's widespread corruption and lawlessness due to the Indrangheta. The Italian law classified the Indrangheta as a mafia in the year 2010, but by then the mafia had already become famous in Italy following a series of abductions in the 1980s as well as in the 1990s involving oil tycoon John Paul Getty's grandson. In the year 2007, the international spotlight shone on the group for the first time following the murder of six competitor clan members in Germany's Duisburg as part of a running fight between families from Calabria's son Luca. Now, the Indrangheta can be roughly divided into two layers. So, at the top sits the Crimine, which is the organization's supreme council. Then below that is the Mandamenti, which adds three bodies corresponding to different districts in Calabria. Also, the building blocks of the Mandamenti are the Indrina and the familial members to which each of the organization's members belongs. According to Europol, authorities have noted the Calabrian syndicate's uncanny ability to copy perfect copies of its operational structures abroad. The organization tends to set up new territories using the same hierarchy followed at home. They even focus on infiltrating local economic and administrative structures over the long term. 
The strategy of foreign colonization is said to be a large part of what distinguishes the Ndrangheta from other mafia-type groups. Now, it is difficult to determine the true scale of Ndrangheta membership, partly because relatively few people who leave Ndrangheta cooperate with authorities compared to other Italian organized crime groups. Also, the statistics compiled by the Italian judiciary in 2008 suggested that while there were around a thousand pentiti or repentant ones linked with the Cosa Nostra, as well as more than 2,000 who had by that point left the Camorra, and just 42 of the Indrangatisti were known to have broken Omerta, or the vow of silence. In addition, it's very usually difficult for outsiders to distinguish between official members and operatives that are barely linked with the organization, and so the estimates of the organization's size vary widely, from between 5,000 to 10,000 around the world. Now, in the words of one Italian anti-mafia prosecutor, the Andrangheta family has a very old heart and a very modern soul. With its rural Calabrian roots, this organization is well adapted to a globalized age. The Andrangheta are common interests which include embezzlement of public funds, contract rigging, fraud usually targeting EU subsidies or tax exemptions on cross-border sales, extortion, human and weapons trafficking, environmental crimes like toxic waste dumping and high-level corruption schemes. Now, such is the scale of their enterprises that prosecutors and mafia experts are alerting the group is even profiting in the COVID-19 pandemic, skimming funds from public health initiatives in Calabria along with loan sharking to cash-strapped businesses all over Italy. Now, when it comes to drugs, the syndicate's hold on the Italian port of Gioia Toro lets it go from some of the most profitable drug routes between Europe and the US. OCCRP stories have also previously examined the alleged role of an Andrangatisti's daughter in smuggling narcotics through West Africa, the rise to prominence of hot-headed Lieutenant Domenico Pele, and the inner workings of Andrangata networks in Belgium as well as in Slovakia. Expert researchers have also revealed how the group helped Mexico's Sinaloa cartel expand into the European market. Now continuing the work of murdered investigative journalist Jan Kusiak, OCCRP's reporting has shown that the Mafia forged close ties with influential members of the Slovakian government, later gaining significant agricultural holdings in that country. In the year 2020, Interpol launched the International Cooperation Against the Andrangheta Initiative, which is a three-year global plan to dismantle the Andrangheta networks and the operations. It's funded by the Italian Department of Public Security. ICANN aims to raise worldwide awareness about the Indrangheta and understand their modus operandi and share intelligence across borders. ICANN includes the cooperation of Italy along with 10 other countries, including the US, Germany, Canada and Australia. European judicial and policing forces also coordinated a joint sting as part of Operation Polino to crack down on the Indrangheta Mafia clans which had been in motion since 2016. Now, the operation involves hundreds of police, prosecutors and investigative officers and is the biggest of its kind to date in Europe. In 2018, they arrested 84 suspects in the Netherlands, Italy, Germany and Belgium. In 2021, this operation touted another success, arresting 31 Andrangheta suspects in Italy and Germany and identifying 65 suspects. The sting involved 800 police officers as well as tax officials in both countries. However, the effectiveness of the international battle against the brutal Indrangheta remains to be seen. What are your thoughts on this? Let us know in the comments. If you liked today's video, then make sure to leave us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon to be always updated with the most exciting content as soon as it's uploaded. Thanks for watching. See you again soon in another video.